So one thing I really love about our family setup is that we have two boys and two girls. I often get people asking me about the differences I've noticed between boys and girls, whether there are any differences, and I just find it really fascinating. So I thought I would do a little video on it today, my experiences so far in raising girls. We've also been sent this amazing book called Speak Up by Laura Corriton, which is all about girl power and helping young girls to find their voice and their confidence and to speak up for things that they feel are important and just to encourage positive self-esteem in young women and I know this book is right up my daughter Marion's street in fact she just did a presentation in school about inspiring women who changed the world she enjoyed every minute of researching it and it's something she feels really passionately about even at the age of 11. The book was released around International Women's Day and I just know Marion's going to love it she started reading it already and is really enjoying it if you're new here I have four children my eldest Dylan is 12 then I have an 11 year old daughter Marion a five year old son Aiden and a one year old little girl called Marnie. So I have quite a wide range of ages going from toddler right through to practically a teenager. He turns 13 at the end of this year. So I just thought it might be nice to do a few more videos on my channel chatting about my experiences of different parts of parenthood and just some observations because I find it really interesting. I watch a lot of videos like that and I find it really interesting to hear other mums experiences. One thing I have found as a mum of two boys and two girls is that my kids are quite stereotypical in their differences in terms of gender. Now I'm well aware that this is not the case with all parents and their children but certainly in my case my boys especially when they were younger and actually still Dylan is still like this at the age of 12 are very boisterous and typical play fighters and things like that. They're full of energy, very loud, and a real houseful. My girls can be noisy too, don't get me wrong, but as a general rule, they tend to be a lot calmer. Marnie's only one, so things could change, and she is definitely slightly feistier than her big sister. As I said, that's a massive stereotype, but it definitely applies when it comes to my kids, and it really got me thinking about the kind of mum I need to be to my boys compared to the kind of mum I am for my girls, and obviously, there are similarities and consistencies throughout but there are slightly different techniques and things that I feel are particularly important for my girls, particularly my 11 year old because with Marnie as I said she's only one so when I'm talking about my girls I'm mostly talking about my daughter Merrin but there are things that I need to be mindful of particularly with her being a girl at her age compared to perhaps my boys who require something slightly different from me. That's not to say I ever treat them differently but there are definitely things that I've noticed that are different for my daughter compared to my sons. I'm going to insert some footage of me and Merrin talking about her thoughts and feelings on growing up as a young girl in today's world as well throughout this video. So the first thing that's really important to me as a mum of girls is listening and helping them to find their voice. Now listening can be a challenge sometimes because Merrin can talk a lot but I remember reading something, I think it was on Instagram, it was a quote that said, always listen to the small things so they'll never be afraid to tell you the big things or words to that effect. But the gist of it was to pay attention to the small things that they tell you, even if you feel like they're not that important or you've got a million things to do and it's really hard to find the time to listen, make the effort because that will just create a situation where she knows she can tell you anything and she will continue to do so as she gets older and those problems grow up with her and become more difficult for her to manage on her own and that's something that's so important to me. I always, always want my girls and my boys to feel like they can come to me with any problem. Speaking Up is the name of the book that we were sent and obviously it's a big theme in the book, just giving girls the confidence to feel like they can have their say, they can stand up, they can make a difference and their voice should be heard and that's something again kind of links in to always listening to them. So one of the things that I do to try and encourage that in my girls and in my boys, it's not exclusive to girls, is to always ask their opinion on things. So if we're I don't know, booking a holiday, I will ask them to look at the hotels and give me their opinion on where they'd like to stay or what they think of a certain place. Sometimes that can backfire and make things a little bit tricky, but I think it's really nice to always get them involved. They feel like their feelings and their thoughts matter and they're more inclined to contribute to things that affect our family as a result. So how do you feel, Marion, about speaking up? If it's in school or among your friends or your family? Naturally, I feel nervous, um, depending on um, the group, 
like how big the group of people are. But I think now, I'm as I get older, I'm getting more confident to just speak up and um, give my opinion. What if something happened that you didn't agree with and you thought was wrong? Would you feel like you could speak up then? Yes, I probably think that I am a person too and I can have my own opinion. So, um, because not everything's up to one person. I have an opinion too. The next thing that is so important to me when it comes to raising my girls is to encourage their individuality. Now, Merrin isn't afraid to be herself. She, like her big brother, she has a very strong sense of what she likes and what she doesn't like. When she was very little, I really wanted her to do ballet and that is such, I appreciate that is a real cliche on my part, but I just wanted to see her in the tutu and dancing around and it was so cute. And she did do ballet when she was very little, but then she reached the stage where she just lost all interest. She had no interest in it at all. All of her best friends still went, but Merrin just decided it wasn't for her. And at that stage, as much as I wanted to encourage her to keep going, we'd obviously spent a lot of time and effort going to those classes for a couple of years. She didn't want to go, so there's no sense in trying to encourage that hobby if that's not her genuine interest. So instead, she's found other things that she likes doing. She loves to play guitar, she loves art, she goes to guides, which is probably her favorite thing. She likes drama. And I want to teach her about diversity in the world, different opinions, different values, different types of people. I think individuality counts. Like, some people feel like they need to be perfect, but I just feel like to be yourself, because if we're all the same, then it wouldn't be, like, It'd be boring. Do you think you're different from everybody else? Yes, because um, there's, well, there's not two of me, so um, sure some people have things in common. J just be yourself and being yourself is perfect. The next thing that's so important to me when it comes to raising my girls and something that's always in the back of my mind is trying to be her role model. Now I know she might not always consider me her role model, certainly as she gets older, but it's something I always try to keep in my mind because I think how I react to things and my thoughts and opinions and how I express them have a really big knock-on effect on my girls and the young ladies that they grow up to become. So for instance, how I react to a challenge or a problem that I'm faced with, I've noticed with my boys that if they come up against something a bit tricky or someone's been mean to them in school or they've encountered some kind of problem, they will brush it off a lot easier than my daughter will. If something goes wrong, they might tell me about it to get it off their chest, but generally they'll just dust themselves off and kind of carry on with their day. Whereas Merrin will really take it to heart and dwell on it for a long time. You can tell that something's really bothering her. And another thing I try to encourage her is that failure is only failure if you stop trying. So if something feels like too much, like you just can't do it, just pick yourself up and you might be surprised how strong and resilient you actually are. So what does girl power mean to you? Because when I was growing up, girl power was something that the Spice Girls sang about. Do you know who the Spice Girls are? I've talked to you about them before, haven't I? And it was a big thing when I was older than you, but still, I was still like a teenager. Yeah. And the Spice Girls talked about girl power and being confident and comfortable in your own skin. So that's what girl power means to me. But what does girl power mean to you? Well, I feel like um, boys expect that they are better. And <laughs> that's just, feel, I feel like girls are starting, um, like girl power is when girls prove boys wrong. Like <laughs> boys, because boys and men are just like, okay, girls can't do this and boys are better at like, sports than girls and boys are faster than girls and then like I was um tons of girls have proved boy um proved boys wrong. That's why I um, read um about inspirational women because most of them actually prove men wrong. Gertrude Eldil everyone said she couldn't swim the English channel but then she did it anyway and proved um tons of people wrong. That is definitely girl power. Are you gonna swim the channel? No. <laughs> <laughs> but 
you could if you wanted to. If I wanted to, I could, but I don't want to. So I hope you enjoyed this video today, something a little bit different, but if you're a mum of girls, I'd love to hear from you. What is the most important thing to you when it comes to raising your daughters? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Also, if you have a girl in your life age 11 and up, I would definitely recommend checking out this book. As I said, Marion is really enjoying it so far, and I think it sends a really important message to young girls growing up in today's world. So I will leave a link for it in the description box. You can go and check it out if you'd like to. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. And if you'd like to see me make a video about my experiences of raising boys, then do let me know in the comments below. I would be happy to do that. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye.